Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, another spotlight here on MMA Draft. Welcome back once again. This time we have Michael Nakagawa. He is right now at UC Davis and was a college wrestler until Title IX, like everybody else, took his wrestling program away at UC Davis. Originally out of Honolulu, Hawaii, but jumped into MMA because there's no more wrestling program. He's 2-0 right now as an amateur, getting ready to make his jump here into the pros before too long. Born in Japan, moved to Hawaii where he grew up, and now he's in California. Michael, how you doing, bud? Yeah, good. How are you, Frank? Good, good. They're, uh, explain to me kind of how you found out that the program at UC Davis got, uh, got axed. Well, the program got dropped after the season, so it was spring quarter at Davis. And uh, we knew that programs were going to get cut. But our athletic director told Coach Zaleski, um, my head coach at the time, mm -hmm. that program is going to be safe. But the day of um, they announced the programs, the program that they're going to cut, they said wrestling is one of the programs that they're going to get cut. So it was like a, you know, backstab kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, yes. What is your understanding of Title IX and how it works between the male and female sports the college, at the NCAA level? Well, I know that um, the female sports team and the male sports team are supposed to have the same scholarship number, mm -hmm. I believe. And with wrestling, it's kind of hard to have men and wrestling, men and women's wrestling because, um, for like, for example, like Davis, we for we're an NCAA one program for wrestling, mm -hmm. and there is no NCAA one program for women for wrestling, so it's hard to give out you know scholarships for females. In that sense to balance it out. You know, with baseball, they have softball. With track, they have both men's and women's. Tennis has men's and women's. You know, exactly. football is taken out of the equation. The NCAA did a great thing of taking football out of the equation. So the 99 right. scholarships go to football. You don't have to worry about any other female things. Football or Soccer has soccer. Wrestling doesn't have anything at all. And gymnastics, men's gymnastics tr traditionally gets cut, just like men's wrestling, to make space for, for more women's sports. Exactly. Now, it, it's, it was, a lot of it was enacted in 1972, and it's destroying – our sport as a whole, is, and it's what's causing is it's causing guys like you that would have been a great wrestler at the college level that you maybe would have went on and tried to fight for the world team and for the Olympic Games to represent the United States of America in the Olympic Games and you know every four years you're not going to do that now because now there's no more wrestling you still want to compete you're still young so make a transition into MMA so now the loss of your wrestling program is MMA's benefit obviously the transition to MMA for you at UC Davis was very easy let, let me let me know Think out of the box here. Let's say I wrestle at UC Davis. There's no more wrestling program. Uh, Uriah Faber wrestled at UC Davis. Team Alpha Male. Is that kind of the transition that happened? Right. That's how it exactly happened. <laughs> so we had a banquet at the end of the year, and Faber showed up. And he gave us, like, a, you know, he welcomed all the wrestlers who trained at his gym and, you know, said, why not try MMA if, if you guys aren't transferring to other schools? And, um, I got offered for other scholarships to wrestle at, you know, East Coast and whatnot, but my parents wanted to, you know, pursue, like, a really good education, and it's hard to pass up Davis as an education. Yeah. No, yes. the, the, it's like, uh, you know, as, as I always say, it's not necessarily, every school has a great educational system, but it's also the networking that you can do out of that university, uh, and UC Davis has a great networking program for Northern California. When you get out, not only will you be one of the better guys in your field, but you also have the network to be able to go get a job. And that's what's right, important exactly. right now. What is your field that right now you're studying at UC Davis? Uh, I'm studying international relation and Japanese. You were obviously you were, you were born in Japan. How is your Japanese? Is it fluent? Yes, I'm bilingual. Did, I hate guys like you. My brother <laughs> my brother's he speaks like four languages fluently, so he gets around anywhere. I'm trying to teach my kids Spanish because in America they need to speak at least two languages, if not more. And guys like you that show up, because same format, same program. Both of you have the exact same degree format, but I walk out of there only be able to speak English. You walk out of there be able to speak two languages, Japanese and English. We graduate from UC Davis together. You're going to get the job, because you can speak to more people than I can. I'm not, and that's the reality of the world. So with that being said, you jumped in MMA. You're an amateur right now, but eventually you want to go pro in MMA. You want to make some money at it. Do you think that you're going to be able to make that jump to kind of bring in and, and have that you know, because the Japanese are very nationalistic. You're going to be able to have that pull behind you, getting a lot of the Japanese Americans to be a little bit of an influence, a little bit of push. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping because right now uh, the MMA in Japan's 
not really dying, but it's not as popular as it used mm-hmm. to be. And I don't think in an MMA world there's a Japanese, Amer- you know, Japanese guy my, like myself who's, who's bilingual, you know, who lived in Japan and also lived in Hawaii, which is another big, you know, state for MMA, and now California. So I think I would have a lot of uh, good fan base. I mean, if I keep climbing up the ladder. I can't think of one guy actually that that speaks Japanese. That's American. That's American. Like I, I don't can't think of one guy that's in MMA that that, that does both. Obviously, Takanori Gomi and 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 uh, you know uh, Akiyama and those guys, but they're Japanese. And they only speak Jap- Japanese. Like you're an American that speaks Japanese, so you have a, a cross relation. That's a huge deal for promotion, for sponsorships, for getting people to pay attention to you. That's a big deal. Now, what weight class are you are you competing at right now? And do you think you'd have to go up, or you be able to stay at that weight class for a long time? Well, I'm a naturally a small guy, you know, I'm Asian, but, um... I'm glad you said I'll it. Probably, <laughs> <laughs> probably at uh, 125 throughout my whole career. How tall are you? I'm 5'6". Five, yeah, five, so, five, sorry, 5'5". Five, five. Yeah, that's, that's the perfect spot. You know, being at, being at that space, that's probably the perfect spot for your for your weight to be, to be in that area, 125. 135 is a max, especially for your height range. That's perfect, but... More importantly, wrestling has prepared you awesomely, obviously, for MMA to make that transition because all the all wrestlers do very, very well when they make the jump to MMA. But what's the other one that's very difficult for you to learn to make that step in? Probably, right now, it's probably jiu-jitsu. Okay. And why, because, why jiu-jitsu? Uh, what's that? Why jiu-jitsu? Why is that so tough for you? Well, I'm sure uh, you as a wrestler know that... Um, Wrestlers tend to make a lot of mistakes in like jujitsu field because we're too aggressive or we like to scramble, you know, in wrestling way, and that sometimes put me into a danger spot. Okay. And, and uh, yeah, I, a lot of the guys that come in from wrestling, they're like, I don't like being on my back. I don't want to fight from my back. You know, that's the biggest problem is when they get taken down or when they start from in the guard. You know, with someone in the guard, they don't really know what to do because their whole concept is just roll over and get back up to your feet. Is that exactly. is that been a tough change for you? Um, not really because you rely on the team. The team alpha male does a great job um, teaching that. You know, we drill that a lot because you know our team is consists of a lot of high high level wrestlers. So we're all not comfortable on our back. So we always practice that, and you know, there's a lot of series from the back that Uriah teaches us, and our BJJ instructor Dustin Akabari. Mm-hmm. So. I'm pretty comfortable for my back right now. It's just from the top is kind of is where I need to work on. Do you uh, do you compete in amateur amateur MMA during your, during the school season now? Because you know there's no more wrestling. Are you, do you get up and go out and try to get as much competition as you can? Well, at first that's what, that was my plan, but after my last fight in January, um, it was kind of hard to do both, especially because in college wrestling. Our practice is sur- um, surrounding our school schedule, mm-hmm. but the pra- pro practice and whatnot does not do that. Okay. So I had a hard time, you know, making it to the gym off um, as much as I wanted. So I decided I should graduate first before I, you know, pursue my dream. How long do you graduate? I graduate in June. Oh, so you're you're close. Like there's not you've got one more semester left and you're done. So that that's fine. Right. And then so you'll start competing again in in. Uh, Probably August or September, you'll be right back in the swing of things. Right, that's all, that's my plan. All right, perfect. Well, Michael, I really appreciate you coming on here, and ladies and gentlemen, you need to pay attention to Michael Nakagawa, especially coming up in uh, the later later part of 2013. After he graduates, he'll be back in the amateur ranks in uh, in MMA and making that jump through, hopefully to the pro someday. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate you coming on.